Hey guys, I'm all hand fishing back here again. Um, kind of series two, part two um, of these videos that I'm doing to kind of catch back up to get, uh, you know, to go back through, you know, uh, tournaments, baits used, um, you know, how my season's gone um, since uh, since the beginning of the year. The last one I did was on uh, F the FLWBFL on Lake Murray back in February and the Ram Open Series on Lake Murray back in February as well. Uh, again, just going through what baits I used, what I'm looking for during certain times of the year, and how I approach, uh, you know, a, a tournament in in, you know, looking the weather, you know, pre-practice, or excuse me, practice, um, you know, doing some pre-fishing and and then up into tournament day. So now we're into March. Um, had the FLW BFL on Santee. Uh, again, had two good. Top 10 finishes in February had a good, really good start to the year. So going into Santee uh, in in practice when I was doing some pre-fishing, uh, I got on to a pretty good spinnerbait bite and a flipping bite. Now, again, if they're w without wind, without some really good current, some good moving water uh, in March, you know the, those fish on Santee again with the unseasonably hot winter that we had, there was fish, you know, a ton of fish, there's already waves of fish that already spawned on Santee. And there were several fish on the beds, several more fish moving up. So in practice, I was fine, again, looking for those pre-spawners. That, that, again, that's just my style. I'm not a big, you know, bed fisherman. I just don't have a ton of patience for it. If I see one on the bed, I'll flip to it a few times. If it seems interested, I might spend a few minutes on it. Again, just not really my forte. So. Looking for pre-spawners, fish moving up, fishing some cypress trees, going to the backs of some spawning pockets. And, uh, and, and again, when there was wind, throwing that spinnerbait around some cypress trees and also going into some of those spawning bays right at the mouth of them where it had some pads or, or you know, some grass and, or, or some trees that were sitting out in front of that spawning bay. Um, you know, had some cypress trees just going right into the mouth. Just perfect setup for those fish to, to feed up and move right on back into that into that spawning pocket or spawning bay. So, you know, I knew looking at the weather during that week that there was a huge front that was coming through that Saturday. It seems like it's that way every weekend in the spring. High winds, um, you know, if I remember correctly, I don't think it was too cold that, that particular day. But, again, the winds were going to be really high. And on Santee, it can get dangerous. So I kind of checked my you know the original plan that I had I kind of had a plan to run further up the lake towards Jack's Creek stump hole packs um, you know more towards towards the swamp I'd kind of put a little pattern together up that way going into some spawning bays and had caught caught some pretty big fish in uh, in practice so once I saw the weather and how everything was changing in the morning of and the way the wind was blowing I completely adjusted my entire game plan and I knew that kind of the night, the, you know, I thought about that the night before, but once we showed up at the ramp and I saw how hard that wind was blowing that early in the morning, I just knew that that was going to be, that was going to be a wash. And um, so I adjusted right there that morning. I said, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to change things up. You, you, and these are the types of things that you got to think about and you got to be able to do in those tournaments to be successful. And sometimes you make adjustments, make changes, and you just completely tank. And that's okay. It's all part of the learning process. In this particular tournament, I knew of some other spawning bays and some other areas that I had marked and had caught some fish in in practice that were closer to closer to the landing in case this front was really going to be you know come through like they were predicting predicting that it would. So I decided to stay closer to the to the ramp, closer to blast off, and again wasn't catching as big a fish as I was up the lake. But I knew that I could go catch a limit and, and put a little something together and, and have a shot. I knew with the weather and the wind that, uh, you know, anything could happen. It was going to change a lot of people's game plans, especially the bed fishermen. Um, kind of played more into my hands. So uh, basically my approach was I fished the mouth of spawning bays and spawning pockets. And that's all that I did the entire day. I, I stayed right near John C. where the takeoff was. And I fished the mouth of those areas. And I had one rod, one reel, one bait on the deck of my boat the entire day. And it's because that it's the number one thing that I'm going to throw in the springtime when the wind is blowing and the conditions were the way that they were for that Santee tournament. And it's, 
the screen fish tackle Michael Murphy high class spinnerbait um, now this is a 3 8 model I was throwing a half ounce so much bigger blades especially on Santee want to move want to move more water and especially down there with the size of fish and size of bait that they feed on you want to have something that's really going to get their attention so I, I use the, the the half ounce I was throwing this this grub on the back this is an almost color it's kind of a, sh a shad color with a little bit of chartreuse on it again this is my favorite color spinner bait absolutely love it I throw it all the time even in dirty water I just switch out to a gold blade in dirty water um, so that was the only bait that I knew that I was going to throw all day just because I have a ton of confidence in it with the way the wind was blowing I knew it would set up perfectly first fish of the day I caught was a seven pound eight ounce bass first spawning spawning base on a pocket that I pulled into ended up catching a seven eight and catching a three and a half uh, right there in the first in the first mouth of that uh, spawning bay that, that we pulled into and um, you know ended up and I actually lost another one uh, I, I had one that got me wrapped around a cypress tree and broke me off um, so I could have could have had three I had no clue how big that fish was but the approach was right on you know I just knew right then everything had just clicked and I had made the right decision and the rest of the day would go great um, yeah, my co-angler actually, I actually tossed my co-angler one of, one of my spinner baits. Um, you know, he ended up catching a couple of my fish that, uh, I say my fish, a couple of the fish that we, in, in the areas that we were in that really actually could have ended up helping me at the end of the day. Um, had a lot of fish hitting the spinner bait that particular day, knocking a foot or two of slack in the line. I go and set the hook and, and they're just, they weren't there. Um, so again, if they were, I don't know if they were largemouth, gar, or what but I did miss a few actually missed a uh, missed another one later on in the day had one hooked up jumped off about halfway back to the boat um, but again I was targeting those spawning bays cypress trees at the mouth of them uh, pads grass anything that I could really just kind of keep that spinnerbait high in the water column burn it across the top throwing downwind into those areas where that wind was just blowing that bait and just running rushing it all right up into into those areas so that was the approach that I took and I wound up I ended up only with four fish um, that, that day uh, I was ended up targeting you know gator grass and, and bank grass later on the day fishing the points of those areas and caught a couple more fish and had four in the box uh, actually caught another five pounder um, you know and had four in the box at you know 11 30 11 45 and uh, didn't get another fish in the boat the rest of the day had a ton of bites had uh, you know had some opportunities but couldn't land them ended up with almost 18 pounds and four fish um, so again that's you know like I said in the first video and those derbies just absolutely critical that you have a limit in that particular case I lived and died by one bait and uh, so you know again learning experience you learn from these these types of uh, these types of things and you know sometimes you learn the hard way like I did in that tournament still had another top 10 finish there at Santee was pleased with that could have been better but hey again could, could have always been worse I, I completely um, restructured my game plan from what I had in practice and went at a, you know a completely different direction and not really blind I knew what I was looking for but in areas that I really hadn't spent a lot of time in so it could have been even worse um, but again making those transitions on the fly Definitely, uh, definitely a big deal, especially, you know, co coming back later in the day and, and how rough that water was and what a, just a, a dangerous ride back that, that it was that day just made me realize all the more, you, you know, the, all, all the more that I had made the right decision and uh, then still ended up with the top 10 finish. So, again, that's, uh, that was, that was Santee. One rod, one reel, one bait. Um, uh, you know, again, 15 pound high seas fluorocarbon yes even at Santee people think I'm crazy they're like oh you aren't using 20 or 25 no I don't I don't like using that that thicker line on a spinnerbait like that even in that dirtier water I just don't like to do it that 15 pound line is perfect and again even the one I broke off on the cypress tree early that morning it would have broke off 20 pound line well I'll say that maybe it wouldn't have I don't know so you know maybe that you know that's uh, one of those things you got to learn from but I've caught so many on that 15 pound test and had a lot of success with it. The cast better. I, I just have more confidence with, with that, that size line, so that's what I use. Um, uh, Shimano Corrado 200i, 6'2 six, six to 1 reel. And um, again, that Arc Rods crankbait series, 7'4, medium heavy. Again, extremely parabolic, 
huge backbone, perfect for getting those fish out of there. And it, just an extremely versatile rod. Again, you can throw crankbaits, you can throw spinner baits, chatter baits, swim baits, you, you name it. It's it's fantastic rod. Loads up really, really well. So that was uh, that was the setup, and, and that's that's how I approached approached Santee. Again, another top 10 finish. Couldn't complain too much. And uh, yeah, check out uh, check out my first video if you're just watching this one. Uh, series three coming next. Thanks, guys.